Hi, Kevin Pollock here with Emerging Civil War. I'm standing in the midst of the 40-acre cornfield here on the southern end of the Antietam battlefield in front of a monument to the soldiers of the 16th Connecticut Infantry. The early afternoon, about 3.15 on the afternoon of September 17th, about 8,000 Union soldiers of the Union 9th Corps began moving from the vicinity of Burnside Bridge west towards the southern environs of Sharpsburg and their objective was about three quarters of a mile in front of them, the high ground that ran east and south of town uh, itself. If the Federals could capture that, then they could potentially squeeze out the right flank of Lee's army and potentially prevent the Confederates from making an escape back into uh, Virginia across the Potomac River. On the far left end of the line was the 16th Connecticut, and then a bit further to their left, the 4th Rhode Island. While the 16th Connecticut was a brand new regiment, uh, bringing into action 779 men. The 4th Rhode Island here off to my left uh, had been in service, had seen service in North Carolina during Burnside's campaign there. However, neither regiment was in very good fighting trim because the 16th Connecticut was brand new. The 4th Rhode Island had nearly mutinied over a commander change just a few weeks earlier and had to be talked uh, off, the, uh, off the ledge, so to speak, to come back and fight for the Union Army. As the Union troops were surging forward, and that some of those troops would reach the back alleys of Sharpsburg, the last Confederate reinforcements to arrive on the battlefield began to show up, and that was the light division of the Army of Northern Virginia under the command of Ambrose Powell Hill. Hill's men began driving down the slope and slamming into the 16th Connecticut and 4th Rhode Island here in the 40-acre cornfield. It was a very confused fight. Both units put up a relatively good fight against the veteran Confederate officers, but eventually the 16th Connecticut and 4th Rhode Island would be driven back by Maxie Gregg's South Carolinians back towards the Burnside Bridge. In their baptism of fire, the 16th Connecticut suffered close to 25% casualties in a few minutes action here in the cornfield. One of the Confederate casualties that day was none other than Brigadier General Maxie Gregg himself. As he was riding into battle, mounted on his horse, a Union bullet slammed into his hip and knocked him from his horse. Immediately, some of his staff officers pulled up an ambulance, thinking that they would have to convey the wounded Greg from the battlefield. As Greg was laying on the ground, he rolled around and realized that the bullet had actually bounced off of his hip and that he was not wounded, it did not embed itself in him, so he was able to mount back on a horse and continue leading his South Carolinians in their attacks here on the southern end of the battlefield. The next morning when Maxie Gregg woke up, he pulled a handkerchief out of his pocket after eating breakfast to wipe his mouth, and according to the story, when he pulled out that handkerchief, that bullet that hit him in the hip dropped to the ground. However, it was not enough to save Maxie Gregg's life for too long as he would be killed at the Battle of Fredericksburg just about three months later. One of the other Confederate casualties down here, another brigade commander in A.P. Hill's division, Lawrence O'Brien Branch, a former uh, graduate of Princeton University and a former United States congressman, was killed by one of the last shots fired of the Battle of Antietam. All told, the 9th Corps' assault would become very close to reaching that high ground three quarters of a mile west of the bridge. However, uh, Hill's men and other Confederate troops were able to drive Burnside back, stop the Union troops' assault, and push them back to the bridge. So by the uh, afternoon, late afternoon of September 17th, about 5.30, 6 o'clock in the evening, the Battle of Antietam, the bloodiest single day in American military history, came to an end.